Hello everybody, welcome back to Tar Takes. It is November 27th, the last Tuesday in this great month of November. The football season is finally over for the North Carolina Tar Heels, but the news is actually just picking up. It was sort of a, it was definitely dry there for about a month, six weeks, where we knew the season was not going anywhere, and we were only going to be seeing more L's, not very many W's, but UNC, they lost this Saturday to NC State. The game, in Larry Fedora fashion, ended in a brawl. And the Tar Heels finished the season with just two wins, and they fired coach Larry Fedora. David, was that the right move? Uh, I mean, I definitely think it was probably time for a coaching change. Obviously, we're thankful to Fedora because he was able to come and coach when we were at a pretty rough time in the school history. But, <clears throat> I mean, back-to-back -back seasons, like with what we had, like, there's no way we could have kept going on. I think it was time for a coaching change. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I agree. Like, I, I think people need to separate. One thing is people need to separate. Like, you can criticize Larry Fedora as a football coach without criticizing him as a human being. And yeah. it was the right move to fire Larry Fedora. Obviously, we understand that, you know, if life was perfect, you would never want someone to fire to be fired. But this is a multi-million dollar industry, and he got paid $12 million, I think, to leave. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can't sit back here and say, oh, you know, we feel super bad for Larry Flora. The guy's going to get paid $12 million to do nothing for the next four years. So, you know, Larry Fedora, obviously he would want to be the coach of UNC, and he gave a lot of effort. But, you know, if you're sitting on your couch making $3 million per year for the next four years, that is fine. Uh, with Fedora, you know... The, his tenure sort of ended and it, with the fight, and I think that signaled that it was time for them to move on. Um, the, the players fought hard, but just a huge theme this year was not being disciplined. Uh, we saw it with the you know a ton of suspensions at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. uh, with with notable players like Carney with Surratt, and then you, then you saw the the quarterbacks come in and they they can't take care of the football. There's a lot of penalties. They're losing to teams like Eastern Carolina. You know, they, they just they're, they're losing to bad teams and they can't beat anyone. So you just sort of saw this this lack of discipline everywhere, and it showed itself in a huge brawl at the end of the NC State game. And and not to say that one brawl should have you know got them fired, but I think it just shows you know, what was happening with this college football team. I will say, you know, I'm, I'm sort of surprised. There's been a lot of, uh, you know, former players and, and current players coming out to speak positively of Larry Fedora. Not to say, like, I would have been shocked if anyone came out there and said negative things, you know, like Baker Mayfield has of Hugh Jackson recently, and we'll get mm -hmm. to that later. Because, you know, it is college football, so you don't see players speaking out against coaches very often one because you know the players don't have the platform but it's just you know that's just not something you really do um but but another thing with Fedora too and why you know it, it was right to let him go was just against rivals you know he lost to NC State again he lost to Duke again uh you know I don't care you know if you're going through a rough patch UNC football cannot only win five games in two years you know, you can have a down season, but your down seasons have to be five or six wins. They yeah. can't be two wins. Two and nine is, is horrendous. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I think it was just time for a change. I mean, obviously, the fact that we were only getting looks at the younger quarterbacks so late into the season, so like that was just showing that his judgment wasn't always there. And the discipline of the team, like with what Ryan was saying, there were so many games throughout this year where – it only took a couple of correct coaching changes or corrections, and we would have had three or four wins. Syracuse, that should have been a win. Virginia Tech, that should have been a win. I mean, there's so many games on the on our schedule where it was just small things that it was completely in control of the coaching staff to mitigate those risks, yet we still ended up losing those games. Yeah, and I will say, I think the one good thing about Fedora, I mean, there's there's a lot of good things that he did. He had a oh, lot of sure. successful seasons in there, but I do think he was a decent recruiter. 
mm-hmm. you know, he was a I, I believe, player. you know, we were always around about top 25, you know, mm-hmm. in, in recruiting classes each year. And that's not bad. UNC is in a top 10 program. So to get top 25 recruits, you know, not top 25 recruits, but to be a top 25 team when it comes to recruiting, I think it's pretty good. But if you're top 25 in recruiting, you have to win more than two football games. And that is where where Larry <coughs> came up short for the Tar Heels. 